Welcome back to Review Crew. I'm Justin. And I'm Madeline. And today we are reviewing Pixar's Soul. Enjoy the trailer. Oh! What the? What is this place? What's your name, honey? Uh, I'm Joe. I teach middle school band. Cut it, go for it. Today started out as the best day of my life. Back here tonight, first show's at 7. Yes! Woohoo! You know what that's gonna say? Joe Gardner! <laughs> I did it! I got the gig! Ah! Must have been sudden for you. No, it's the great before. This is where new souls get their personalities, quirks, and interest before they go to Earth. Meet 22. I don't want to go to Earth. Stop fighting this. I don't want to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, look, I already know everything about Earth, and I don't want anything to do with it. You're missing out on the joys of life, like uh, pizza. I can't smell. We can't, we can't taste either? All that stuff is in your body. No smell, no taste. Or touch. See? Okay, I get it. Wow. It's my life. Is all this living really worth dying for? You're still alive? Can you help me get back? No way! There I am. What are we waiting for? Wait, not me! <laughs> This weird. What is it? 151,000 souls go into the great beyond every day, and I count every single one of them. The count's off. Huh. So, that was the Soul trailer. We've both seen the movie now. Um, I've seen it twice, and you saw it for the first time the other day, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. So, what did, what did you think? What are your initial thoughts? Did you know anything about the movie going into it, or was it like a blind watch it was kind of a blind watch you know everyone's been telling me to see it i thought it was a very interesting sort of movie for pixar specifically about like you know navigating the astral realm <laughs> and also like i feel like it was kind of a criticism of capitalism <laughs> in a way and just like society as a whole and how yeah. we view like our purpose or things like that. Yeah, no, yeah. the movie definitely, like, it's, like, a, one of the major, like, struggles that Joe has. Joe Gardner, music teacher, who, I guess we should kind of, like, just, like, preface oh, the yeah. movie a bit. I guess, like, so the movie focuses on Joe Gardner, who's a kind of, like, a middle-aged uh, uh, music teacher, and he has, like, these big dreams to play with these jazz musicians that he's, like, really uh, passionate about, but, um, and one day he falls, he, he finally gets, like, the job that he wants to, to do, and then he falls in a hole and he goes on like this crazy existential journey of like, yeah, like you said, like his purpose and everything. Um, so definitely interesting for Pixar to tackle like a middle aged man. And w what did you think of like his character arc? Like, did you, were you like emotionally invested in his character? Yeah, absolutely. Because I just really, I really felt for this guy. He has been trying to like reach his dreams and achieve some sort of goal of like, being a musician, you find out that that's what his dad was, and that he really loved jazz, and you just like want more for him. But at the same time, I kind of appreciate how like it shows if you're super goal oriented in life, it kind of prevents you from enjoying it and like what's in front of you right now, because there are like very real barriers that can prevent you from reaching like certain things. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like his, he kind of like highlights his own purpose as like his career, and like those mm -hmm. two things are like very like intertwined in his mind. 
and it's sad watching because like I, I love in the movie when they talk about like the lost souls like you know like, mm-hmm. the, like that dark like realm where like the people who are so focused and like obsessed on achieving their goals they end up just like losing out and, like all the joys of life and like it's sad because like I feel like the movie is isn't speaking to like children necessarily like a normal Pixar movie it's speaking to like probably like more like millennials Gen Z like older people who are now like emerging into like the workforce mm-hmm. and who have been like told their whole lives like oh like follow your passion like if you feel like if you're passionate about your job um you you feel like you like won't be working a day yeah. in your life and stuff like right. that so the movie has a lot of interesting ideas like that and then there's the other character that he meets the soul 22, soul 22 I, yeah. voiced by tina fey which i didn't even know it was tina fey until until like after the movie but she she's hilarious and yeah. she kind of plays a soul in this realm that hasn't been like infused with a body on earth yet and uh, are, are they gen- is Soul Twenty Two gendered? I, I don't think they ever put. It I don't gen- think so. Well, because like from my understanding is that like the place that he goes into this astral realm or yeah. whatever the place like where you go before you die and like after you die. It's just yeah. like it's like the great before. Yeah, and, and before and after. It's yeah. like everything. It's like beyond our comprehension. So like I don't know. Everyone like has a soul, but a soul can like encapsulate each different body and so like when he's in that place he like in in the great beyond as they say yeah he he's his own soul but when he's back on earth he's in like his ego and his like physical body totally and she hasn't been able to like reach the like enlightenment or whatever you want to call it to like be back on earth yeah she's stuck she's stuck in like the great before and she's like looking for that spark because she th- she feels like if she doesn't have like that spark like that thing to like bring her to earth that she won't have like anything to do and like worth and life isn't like worth living but it isn't until like the end of the movie that they realize that you don't get that last badge uh, you you don't get the last badge until you're like ready to live you don't n- necessarily need something like jazz or like a sport or something you just need to be like willing to like give yourself up to like the little things and like the joys in life yeah and cool. also like appreciate how like I don't know I think that like being really normal in life or like normal people are like very underrated in like what society would you say is normal? I don't know people who just like find joy in the simple things yeah. like you know don't need to be doing much like just like hanging out and like doing their hobbies yeah and like there's just such an emphasis I feel like in our culture and just in the world to like want to be like extraordinary you yeah. want to succeed at like all these things and, and that's to, like just, commodify your passion yeah so, and yeah. that's just like a tremendous amount of pressure to like put on yourself yes. and that just leads you to feel like disappointed and you're like oh well I don't even want to do this because I can't be this great like I'm not going to be the best like next jazz musician like, exactly that sucks yeah and, and what's so great and like fulfilling about the movie is that like it alleviates that pressure like I felt like like a weight like lifted off yeah. my shoulders like oof, like I don't have to be this amazing film person or whatever. Like it's yeah. it's, it's very like um, fulfilling in that way. Yeah, and yeah. I think like once she realizes, or the, once twenty two, the soul like realizes that, and that they just like observing the world and like being present in it, and that it doesn't have to be like anything more than that. I yeah, think that's a very important realization, and that's like something I think isn't very like ingrained in like Western culture. Oh, that yeah. much and that's more of like i don't know like they talk about that a lot in like eastern religions and like spirituality and stuff but yeah yeah w- are you referring to like any spiritual kind of like teaching specifically or no, just, or just like, like general just yeah just in general because i've i've seen like stuff in like movies and different like clips who try to like encapsulate that like the feeling of you just need to like observe where you are right now like living on earth because your time on earth is so like limited yeah that if you just like keep trying to focus on like what's coming next then you're just gonna like drive yourself nuts yeah and that yeah so i also think like i think that it could also be viewed i guess like as a form of like meditation and just like because meditation can really be like anything so i feel like when the soul with 22 was like in his body and they're just like looking around looking at the leaves falling from the trees and like walking like and how how at peace they felt like that was just like a kind of form of meditation and being like grounded in that body totally yeah yeah no that scene it's like one of those like staple like super emotional pixar scenes but it really does like get me every time like i love the images of like the people like talking at the restaurant and they start to just like notice these like very small but like very meaningful human interactions 
and it's like and it gives them like a it restores like their sense of purpose and i think that's the moment where 22 like really wants to like live besides eating the mm -hmm. pizza which is a yeah. great scene when she, <laughs> she eats the pizza for the first time True. yeah yeah. Um, one of my favorite scenes that I want to talk about is the scene in the barber shop mm. when they go to the barber shop. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure who voices the barber there, but he he has like an amazing monologue where he talks about how he he felt like he was always born to be what what was he he always wanted to be he born wanted to be a vet he wanted to be a vet yeah. exactly he was he felt like he was born to be a vet and when he couldn't be a vet and he had to like provide for his child I think he became a barber to like pay the bills. And that, I think it gets to, like, a really interesting theme in the movie. Because at the beginning, when Joe is offered this, like, amazing chance at the, at the school for, like, a full-time job, he declines it because he kind of sees it like a failure. He feels mm -hmm. like he feels like if he takes his job, he's not, like, achieving his dreams. And I think that's also just, like, amazing, like, an alleviation of that pressure to, like, you, you don't have to strive to, like, the, the highest, like, form of excellence. Like, you can... I, I wouldn't even look at it as like settling. Like you can, yeah. you can just like search for other fulfilling ways to like employ your passion, and also just like feel happy with your career and life and stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah. I think that like your passions don't necessarily like have to be your career. Like your career exactly. can just be like whatever. Like we all in this world need to like make money and like yeah. be able to provide for ourselves and others. So it's like I don't know. They're really like you can't just be like oh. I'm gonna go play jazz if that's not a feasible yeah. <laughs> option for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, what did you think of the animation? Did you think it was like impressive? You think it was kind of like lacking compared to like other Pixar movies? Um, well, I thought, I thought it was cool that there was like a lot more representation of like people who aren't like white, yeah. you know, having like a, a main character who is black and stuff. I also really liked when they're in like the great beyond and the animation with yeah. that and how they kind of like portrayed the astral plane like while on earth and there yeah. would just be like these big holes <laughs> like in the street i thought that that was cool yeah and yeah. You, you've uh, you've astral projected yourself right <laughs> you i've tried are you I've familiar tried. with that plane of existence is it it's is like it accurately different. represented in the movie it's different because like that like it just depends i feel like because the astral plane can be like really different like depending on like where you want to go and like i don't know it's different if you're like lucid dreaming and want to go to a specific place right. and like the actual astral plane and i think that that the what was represented in the movie was like a place that you can't really get to unless you have died or like in like the waiting room or whatever sure, when he just like, like kind of happened <laughs> accidentally happened upon the astral plane because of um what was his name joe no oh, oh, no terry. The, terry terry, terry. The, he's funny yeah like yeah. the the little evil astral body yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. silly yeah cool yeah so what are your overall thoughts? Would you recommend it to anyone? And what's what's your rating? Yeah, I, I love Soul. Uh, I'm definitely going to watch it again. It's definitely mm -hmm. one, of my, one of my favorite Pixar movies. Um, I would recommend it to like people our age, you know, people who are like, might feel a little lost in the world or feel like they're doing something they don't want to be doing or just kind of need some like spiritual guidance. I would definitely recommend it. Um, and I think we haven't mentioned like the, the score from Trent, Trent Reznor, Atticus mm. Ross, really yeah. fantastic. Shout out to Trent Reznor, Trent for, Reznor. For, <laughs> for making this, uh, making this movie or making this score for his kids. Cause he said it's like the only thing his kids could, uh, could listen to of his music. But yeah, regardless, highly recommend. I think it's an incredibly well-written movie, some fantastic animation and yeah, just overall really fulfilling spiritual journey through the astral plane. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what about yeah. you? Well, I think it's an extremely timely movie for right now because I think, you know, everything's crazy. I feel like in the past year, a lot of people have just been, like, really observing their own consciousness and wondering what that means for them and just really have had a lot of more time to think about that, especially young people. So I think this is, like, a really good movie for right now to just, like, try to, like, enjoy your surroundings and like I don't know it's not always enjoyable as we know <laughs> yeah but like you can just like make the most of it because it's not it's not what you'll always be in for sure. sure yeah no, I just feel like like moving in every like day-to-day -day life now I'm just like just like after watching the movie like I opened my window this morning it was like a blue sky I was like yeah. Oof. I'm just trying to I'm gonna try to count those things it's, a little more 
you know. It's what they say, like, it's the, it's the little things. It's, it's the, little the little things, things. in life. It's true, it's true. But it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very true. true. What would you give Soul out of 10 if you had to slap a rating on it? Oh, I think, I think I would give Soul an 8. I, like, really, I really liked it. I think there was some things that, I don't know, could maybe be approved upon. I don't know. Like, the ending didn't feel as satisfying for me as, like, I don't know. That's kind of a... It's kind of a dumb thing to say. No, it's not a dumb thing to but say. Like <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, I think a lot of people have some, like, gripes over the ending, like, if it doesn't feel, like, too satisfying, or it's a little, like, rushed, I think. Yeah, or I just felt yeah. like it was trying to, like, make it, like, you know, everything, like, happy ending and yeah. stuff kind of yeah. feel. But. Yeah, but, but, you know, that'll always yeah. be a struggle for him, I guess. But it, but it definitely leaves him, like, an uplifting note where, yeah. like, his mindset has definitely changed, but... True. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I agree for the most part. I'd probably, I'd probably give it like an eight, eight and a half. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, uh, scores are a little silly or like a little arbitrary, but I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I could see this movie growing on me in time. Even like for the, sure. en even like the ending too. I could see myself giving it like an eight and a half, nine. I think. Yeah. yeah. Word. Cool. So that was our review on Soul. We'll be right back after the break. That's all for this week. If you want to follow more Review Crew content, go to the Review Crew Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, as well as the Orange TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Find the Review Cues podcast on Spotify or on our website at orangetvnetwork.syr.edu, where you can also find our blog and more OTN information. Check out this week's virtual screening hosted by UU, Tenet. See you next week. Thank you.